Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey, hello everyone. It is great to see you all. We are getting started here in just a minute. We're just waiting for a few more people to join in, but while we wait, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me and my special guest today. We want to welcome you to a very special edition of the Weekly Roar. Today, I am celebrating my 200th episode of the Weekly Leadership and Personal Development live event that I call the Weekly Roar. Now, today, I am privileged to be joined by my colleagues and friends that have become experts in personal and professional growth through their own journeys. Now, these are best-selling authors, successful entrepreneurs, experienced leaders, and professional coaches. And together, we're going to share our stories with you today so you can see how fostering a growth mindset is a key ingredient to success. Now, today, you're going to hear about our journeys, and you'll see that they're all as individual as we are. But you will also hear that they all have one common ingredient, and that is intentionality. Now, before we dive into this, let me make some introductions. I'm Greg Storch. I'm the owner of Lion Enterprise, host of the Weekly Roar, and I'm a certified professional leadership coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. Now, let me introduce my dear friend, Melanie Ake, the founder of Everyday Leaders Professional Coaching and Consulting. Welcome, Melanie. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do? Hi, Greg. Thank you for having me. This feels like 100 episodes ago we were doing 100. I can't believe you're at 200. We, Congratulations. We were. Thank you. This is so wonderful. And with this amazing group of people and my mentors and friends here too, um, but I'm joining from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I focus on developing cultures, people, and processes in leadership development for corporations. Now military, I can add on. I'm so mm -hmm. excited about that. And, um, and really community programs to add value back into their lives for my story that we'll share in just a little bit, because it's all about our beliefs and how we can be intentional when we realize how our beliefs really drive us and everything. So thank you again for having me, Greg. I'm really excited about today. Oh my gosh, it's so great to have you, Melanie. And yes, it was a hundred episodes where we talked about consistency. And today we're shifting gears a hundred episodes later, and now we're talking about growth. And I'll tell everybody a little bit why I chose that topic. Now, next, I'd like to introduce another friend and colleague of mine, Miziel Diaz. Now, he is the founder of Advanced Leadership Consulting. It's great to see you, Miziel. Again, please tell us a little more about yourself and what you do. Thank you, Greg. I'm really honored. Very, very much honored to be here with you and uh, this fantastic panel and also all the people that are joining us today. Really, uh, for me, I feel very, very privileged. So my goal is to advance people so they can advance their world. Really, is that simple. It's to activate their potential so they can live a life that they truly believe, you know, that they can achieve, that they dream of. I think that um, learning, you know, what I've learned over the years and, and once I got to know that there was more inside of me, every follower can turn into a leader and every leader can turn into an agent of change. And that's my goal. That's what I live, that's what I live to do every single day. I love it. Um, he said one important word, and that was potential. We're going to talk a little bit more about potential and how that relates to a growth mindset in just a little bit. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Now, my next panel member is a self-proclaimed serialpreneur. <laughs> She's another one of my tribe members. Her name is Anza Goodbar. She's the founder and CEO of Audientum LLC and the creator of the Six Figure Life and Business. Anza, please tell us a little more about yourself and what else do you do? 
Awesome. Well, first of all, Greg, congratulations on your 200th episode of the Weekly Roar. It has been, <clears throat> excuse me, such a joy to follow you over the years and especially to be here to celebrate this momentous occasion with you and to be here among friends and, you know, old and new. So um, again, my name is Anza Goodbar. I'm in Denver, Colorado. I run an agency that supports small businesses. We help with business development, um, everything from processes, procedures. Um, we go from idea to income. We also teach, uh, um, we do a lot of business coaching, um, talking about mindset and leadership. And just recently, I started working with schools to work with teachers and staff to teach leadership. And so I'm super excited to be adding that to our list of services. I love it. Thank you so much for taking time to join us, Anza. I know you're super busy. Um, and so I really appreciate the time you've set aside today to join all of us. And last, but certainly not least, it is my honor to be joined by a Navy shipmate and really my brother from another mother. <laughs> now, I've known this panel member for decades, and I want to welcome Tony Thornton. He's the founder and CEO of Just One Technologies. Tony, please share a little bit about yourself and what you do. Uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, Greg, it is a pleasure, Gigi, uh, to be on your 200th excuse me, episode. Uh, just a tremendous accomplishment. I've known you for over 35 years. And uh, again, we're just so proud of you, our Navy family, to see where you've come from to where you are now. And I know this is just the beginning. Uh, happy to be here with the other panelists. They're all wonderfully accomplished. And so uh, again, it's a, it's a blessing to participate. Uh, I'm joining today's uh, podcast from uh, Maryland. And in terms of background, I served 30 years of active service in the United States Navy. I retired as a commander. I was blessed to be CIO of our President's Hospital. CIO of our Navy Health Enterprise at the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery. And then uh, my last job before I retired, I was Chief of Infrastructure and Operations for the Defense Health Agency, which is the largest health enterprise in the world. And today I'm a successful entrepreneur and business owner where I support several large integrators in the federal space uh, supporting the public sector. And again, it's just a blessing and pleasure to be here with you today, Gigi. Oh, man, I cannot thank you enough. It's been uh, such a pleasure watching your journey unfold as well. I, I feel like I've had a front row seat to all of you. <laughs> and so I can't wait to share this with all of our visitors today. So once again, thanks, Tony. It's great to see you again, brother. Your perspective is going to be invaluable in today's discussion. Thank so, you. all right, you guys, what do you say we get this party started? As you all know, today marks the 200th episode of The Weekly Roar. And if you do the math, you'll realize that I've been speaking about leadership and personal growth topics for almost four years straight. What's been the most enlightening thing for me through this journey was the amount of growth that I've experienced from the very beginning to today. I can see and I can hear the growth and that's why I chose to discuss growth today. The growth occurred because I was intentional and consistent in my efforts. And so there's the first tip of the day, right? Be consistent and intentional with your actions. You see, our growth doesn't just happen. We have to be intentional about it. And I'm sure my panel members will tell you that same thing. Now, one of the books that set me on my own growth journey was John Maxwell's book called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Now, I know some of my panel members are intimately familiar with that book. <laughs> and, you know, in James Allen's book, As a Man Thinketh, the author wrote that people are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. Now, this is, in essence, what growth is all about and why it's important for us if we want to achieve success, to achieve our potential, however we define that for ourselves. So today, we're going to discuss growth, why it's important, why more people don't pay attention to it, 
what it can do for you and your potential, and some tips maybe on how you can become more intentional with your growth. So we're gonna walk around the room here and we're gonna talk some stories. And I want to start off with Ms. L. Diaz. <laughs> I would love for you to just <laughs> share. To <laughs> I know, he's like, wait, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> That's good. Ms. That's if you would please, um, I'd love to hear a, a story about an event in your life that helped you to produce significant growth. Absolutely. Uh, there are many, and, and I will try to walk back as much as possible. Um, and the reason I want to start that way is because all of us, those that are watching online right now, Tony, Melanie, Anza, you, uh, uh, Greg, all of us at one point, we, we did not have uh, the awareness to do what we do today, right? And we said, I don't know how to, or et cetera. Um, so let me, let me go back as far back as when I was a teenager, right? And this is at the time, you know, I was doing, I was taking growth steps, but I did not call it that way. And I did not know exactly what I was doing, yet I was doing it. And as you mentioned, I worked as a caddy at a golf course, a very luxurious place. My parents divorced when I was 12. I rented my first apartment at the age of 14. So I, I paid rent since 14. I lived on my own since I was 14 years old. My mom was illegal here in the U.S. She came and overstayed a three months visa at the time, and I stayed in the Dominican Republic. So I worked during the day as a caddy, and at night I went to, I went to school. And the intentional step that I want to highlight in that you know story that I can go in detail later on is that you know a lot of my friends at the time, as a caddy working at that golf course, you make a lot of money. Uh, think, you know, a 14, a 15 year old making a hundred, $120 a day. Okay. A day. Mm -hmm. So um, I was one of the youngest, but I was surrounded by other people that were, you know, adults, more advanced in age, more advanced in age. And they, um, you know, drinking was the everyday life because, Hey, let me drink today because tomorrow I'm going to make another hundred dollars, you know? So that was the mentality. And yet I was very intentional about never, ever quitting school. Never. I was always going to school. I was always uh, doing my homework, keeping with my work, doing everything that I had to do every single day. And I did not use the word intentionality. I did not use the word growth. I did not use the word, you know, uh, growth plan or anything like that. But I was responding to my potential. I was responding to the voice inside of me that was telling me to stick to it, keep doing it, go and 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 don't don't waver, don't don't lose your focus, keep your integrity, don't follow the wrong voices, you know, just stay focused on that. And that 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 was what I felt inside of me. So to you listening to me right now, let me tell you why I did not end. With, with frustration. And, and, and the reason I believe I did not end up frustrated is because there was an agreement between my potential and my mindset, right? So let me put it to you this way, Greg. We become frustrated when there is a conflict between my potential and my mindset. My potential says you're a giant. My mind says you're small, you're little. There is a conflict. Your potential says do it. Your mind says I can't do it. Your potential says you can grow and be better. And your mind says I'm poor. I'm, I'm from a third world country. I've, I don't have the computer, the books, the shoes, or the family, or the last name. But your potential tells you you, you can do more. But in your mind, you said, no, this is it. That's the end of it. So be intentional about paying attention to the voice of your potential, not to the voice of your surrounding, your environment, the people 
around you. So th that was a moment that I can highlight in my life that really, you know, activate my, my personal growth. Yeah, I love that. Man, I was writing copious notes on that one, and I hope everybody here today is too. <laughs> wow, what a way to start this off. Uh, you know what? Let's jump down. Melanie, how about you? I know you've got some really great growth stories. So share a story or an event in your life that helped you to produce significant growth. Uh, well, first of all, my mentor through the John Maxwell 15 Laws of Growth is sitting. I'm in the middle of my screen. And so I've got my two great compadres. Michiel and Greg. And uh, so I tell you, when we talk about growth and we talk about intentionality, chapter one talks about growth gaps. And so when I took that for the very first time, you know, I thought the knowledge gap was what was really just, it, it flew to me like a red flag that I didn't know. I didn't know how to grow. You see, I was in corporate America and I was just living up to a job description. And I thought, well, that's going to get me everything that I need in my life. It's going to get me success. It's going to get me a position. It's going to get me influence. It's going to have all these things. And I'll be surrounded by inner circle of people that I can know, like, and trust, right? So I became really successful in industries, in medical device sales, in training and development and leadership. And I was growing into what I believed was a great career, a great life until one day I was brought in by surprise and told that it was my last day and I was Shanghai <laughs> and I realized like what in the world <laughs> like are you serious all the things like you know when you think you're in a great successful company and a great successful career and you've done all these great things with accolades and yet someone can put their beliefs on you hmm. and it took me that moment that I almost believed it I almost believed it I went home and I thought, how am I going to tell my husband and my family that I've just been eliminated and told the most significant thing was that I had no value. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I lived for every single day from when I was born to understand who I was surrounded by, that I knew that I had value and I knew I added value. And so part of this was I had just joined the John Maxwell team like a year and a half before that. I was intentional about my growth. I was intentional about adding value to people. I knew that that was my purpose. And yet someone else saw me differently. What I realized is I didn't fit with that group of people. I didn't fit in where I was always giving my energy and my resources and my time and my talent. And I had to be really intentional about how do you pivot? How do you begin to pivot and realize what's in your heart? isn't in alignment with where you've been. And how do you begin to change that? My gosh, Greg, that starts with really getting in tune and in alignment with what your heart is purposed for. And mm -hmm. that's where it all started. That's where it all started for me. And it got really clear. And I'm a person of faith. And I've heard someone recently and many years ago tell me, you know, what you pray for is really important. It's how you pray. Amen. And so I started praying for clarity, not for things, not for positions, not for jobs, not for help me get out of debt. It was praying for clarity because the clarity has given me the ability to put myself in the right circles with the right people, ask the right questions as our mentor, John Maxwell tells us, right? Mm -hmm. Great leaders ask great questions and being able to listen to those answers so you know how to make the right decisions next. And that's mm -hmm. what's changed for me. Man, oh, oh God, this is phenomenal. You, uh, this is the one thing I wrote down. Someone can put their beliefs on you. Oh, man, because I heard somebody say one time, when you don't believe in yourself, you can borrow my belief in you until you can. Those words powerful. are powerful. Yes, absolutely. Man, wow. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you made a very great point. And that point is sometimes people just 
think they're naturally going to grow because that's how we develop as human beings, right? When we're, we're babies, we develop, we're, we grow into adults, right? But so in our minds, we're thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to keep growing. But that's not true, is it? Not at all. It's we've got to become intentional. And I love that you've um, <laughs> prayed for clarity and for intentionality. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk a little bit about what you started doing. I, I want to say 800. Not, you've got to be near 900 days. What what day are you on, by the way? 936 today. Oh, okay, I'm writing that down. Nine, oh, we're going to talk about what that 936 days is in just a minute, y'all. So st stick with us. I want to scoot over to Tony. Tony, I know because we've known each other since we were just junior enlisted dental technicians in the Navy back in the 80s, <laughs> right? Um, tell me about a story or an event in your life that um, helped you to produce some significant growth in your own life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, much like my two uh, other panelists, there are tons of stories that have got me uh, to this point. But given that question, uh, like you described, my story is one uh, of, of military background. Um, I had a very, very successful career as an enlisted sailor before being selected for commission and officer ranks in the Navy. Um, at that point in my career, the script to be successful, and Greg, I know you understand this, uh, that script to be successful as an enlisted sailor, enlisted sailor was relatively easy. <clears throat> easy. Um, but once I was commissioned, all commissioned officers, particularly staff officers, we have to attend what we call officer indoctrination school or what we call fork and knife school. And basically it's finishing school uh, for Navy staff officers. And there I trained and competed with other hospital administrators, doctors, lawyers, nurses, uh, nurse professionals, chaplains, and other highly skilled and trained professionals. Uh, there were approximately 400 or so students. Uh, at that time, my recollection, there were probably 10 or 15 that were minorities. So less than 5%. And so uh, after several months of training, I completed the training successfully. And at the end, there are three awards that are given on graduation day. The academic award for highest academic achievement, the physical fitness award for physical fitness achievement. And the last is the leadership award, which goes to the person that exhibits traits necessary to be a successful leader in the officer ranks. I was blessed to be awarded the leadership award. And the reason why that was so significant, that was such a significant growth event for me, with all the successes I was blessed to achieve at that point in my career, I honestly was just not sure that my experiences, my training, my education had compa compared me, prepared me to compete at that level of the highest officer ranks uh, against my peers. And what that award helped me realize is that I was good enough. Um, that I had all that I needed to be successful as a naval officer, as a naval officer competing with the best of the, the best. Conversely, there are several authors that have written about the thin line between success and failure, your mental psyche. Uh, you mentioned uh, the book uh, by James Allen, you know, and it's true, as a man thinketh, so they are, so to speak. Um, you think that you're prepared until you're tested challenge to use your toolbox of skills. There are several documented examples of professional athletes that either miss a shot, miss a putt, given all of their training uh, and ability to perform at the highest level. And when push comes to shove, they don't perform as expected. And sadly, in some instances, those professionals spiral, you know, they're no longer at the peak of their career. And so physically they're saying, but the failure creates doubt in them and it overwhelms their ability to perform and achieve at the highest level. And so for me, that event propelled me to realize that yes, I was good enough. I can compete with the best of the best. And then the rest was history. Now, I imagine, you know, if maybe I not have won the award, would I still be successful? I would hope so, but it absolutely helped press that I believe button in me. And again, was a propeller for my career. Yeah, that's a great story. Just a few weeks ago, I did a weekly roar on um, appreciation. And I, I was talking about in the Navy, you know, at a very early 
point in my career receiving my very first Navy Achievement Medal, a personal award, and, and how that event, much like your event receiving the Leadership Award, gave you the desire to want to perform at a different level for people. And, and from there, you know, this bar keeps being raised <laughs> higher and higher and higher. And so that appreciation, you know, or that recognition sparks this thing in us that makes us want to continue to keep going and keep growing. <laughs> so that that's great. I love that. And you know what? I actually, I think I remember hearing that story, but I didn't remember that you had won the leadership award in OIS of all places, um, high, high competition. So that's phenomenal. Thanks Thank for you. sharing that story. And uh, my good friend, you have so many stories. I'm I'm actually waiting to find out which event in your life <laughs> provided some significant growth for you as well. I had something planned to talk about. And after hearing everyone else's story, I think I'm going to share something a little bit different. And I love it. It might be one that you don't know yet. Um, so when I was younger, I was just a natural leader. People just always followed me. And I didn't think about being a leader, you know, as a, as a young girl or even going into high school. And um, I don't know. I must have been in my, my late 30s. And I started a new job. And um, I was a woman of faith. I worked for a prominent um, nonprofit very well known in my community, in fact, around the world. And um, my marriage came to an end. And so I was terminated because of my marriage ending. And when I was hired at this new secular organization, um, everyone hated that leader of the organization, what the organization stood for. And by proxy, they hated me. And they um, initially really sabotaged me. They gave me false information. They led me down wild goose chases. And there was a particular program. I was a professional event planner at the time. And there was a very high level program that in, you know, in retrospect, I probably never should have been given because I was so new at the organization. But again, they were setting me up for failure. And I was totally sabotaged by my new boss, newly hired boss, and my teammates. And um, up to that point, the whole um, uh, culture was about making more money, having more profitability, being at the top of our game. We, we partnered with a five-star hotel, and so the expectations were very high. Well, because of the misinformation that I had been given, um, there were choices that I made that didn't pan out the way I thought that they would. And there were some disasters that happened. Just a, a myriad of things that anything that could go wrong went wrong. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I was going to need to go to the hotel and speak with these high level people who happened to be the executives from NBC. And um, they, they didn't come to play. They came to let me know about every inch of my failure and how it impacted all of their clients. So I decided I needed to take my boss with me. I needed a little backup power. And I was a little unsure if that was the right move, but I was pretty sure at that point, I felt totally defeated, wasn't gonna be able to stand up under this scrutiny on my own. Well, when I got there, my teammate was there and she said, hey, I'm gonna come in for moral support. So I said, great. My boss was there. He just took over the conversation, threw me under the bus. I was a single mom with four kids. I really, really needed that job. And I decided in that moment that if that was the type of employer they were, that I was not going to stay. We got back to the office and I went into him and I closed the door. And in my most quiet, intentional tone, I said, I will never ever be thrown under the bus like that again. And I laid out the situation. I said, no more will this be. And I walked out and everyone was like having a glass against the door, listening into that conversation. And they were like, oh my gosh, 
that changed the tone for everything moving forward. You know, it, and this wasn't my intention, but it usurped his position as the leader because they had all been treated that way too, but nobody had the courage to stand up and make a change. And I said, this is the way it will be moving forward or I will pack my bags and I will leave today will be done. And it really made me think that, you know, like Melanie had said, sometimes we can take on um, the role that someone else bestows on us. And it was really difficult at first for me to stand up and, and own my truth and say, you know, this is who I am. Take me or leave me. I'm here to do well. You know, I went on to become employee of the year. Um, you know, that was a huge catalyst for the next thing, which was um, going to college. You know, you had mentioned earlier that I was a, a teen mom. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to college until after that point. It was a huge pivotal point for me to really own my value, probably for the first time ever, because up to that point, things had been very easy for me. I was in the right place at the right time. You know, this happened, this happened, it was great. But then this was like my real wake up call about, you know, who am I? Who do I stand for? What's the impact I want to make? How do I exert my influence for good? And, you know, that, that changed everything for me. And I think that as difficult as that was, that prepared me for things down the road when I did step into business ownership. And it prepared me for the crash. I, I after I left the event planning field, um, you know, that I started a mortgage company. And in 2008, due to situations beyond my control, um, once again, there was this huge loss, this huge devastation. And, you know, what do I do now? And Melanie alluded to filling in the gaps, you know, what were the gaps that I needed to look at to get to that next thing? And that's what led me then ultimately to the world of online business and being able to really own my value um, and see how I could add value to others and helping them go from idea to income and be able to grow a six-figure business in a short amount of time and then being able to elevate to seven and eight-figure businesses as well. I love it. Man, oh my gosh. If you all watching this right now are not furiously writing notes, I'm going to give you the cliff note on that one. Now, here's what Anza just told you. When there's a misalignment with our values, our life gets out of balance, right? There, you only find harmony when there's an alignment in value, right? In values, your values, your core values. When there's a misalignment, things aren't going well. And when things aren't going well, when you're facing adversity, how you hold yourself is a key to growth. You can either shrink from that or you can grow from that. And Anza just showed us a great example, real life example of how that propelled her growth because she knew she was in a misalignment with her values and fighting to get back in alignment with them created her own growth. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, I don't even want to go next. <laughs> After all those stories, but I do want to share a little bit of a story with you um, because I realized it did create growth in me. And it was when my father started to get very sick with Alzheimer's. And he, uh, if you've ever experienced anyone with that um, illness, you know that they become a person you don't recognize. And to have that happen to your own father, it's devastating. And so, you know, for many years, my father lived with Alzheimer's and it got progressively worse and worse and worse. And I remember going home to Daytona Beach for my one of my sister's weddings and my father and mother, you know, of course, were there and we went out to dinner and at dinner. Uh, my dad and my mom were sitting across the table from me and, and my wife, and um, I could see the struggle that my mom was going through to take care of my father. And, and it was a challenge because she was around him 24-7, and I was not. So I was just observing um, how she was just having a really difficult time at this dinner, and so I took over. 
And um, I began to step in and, and handle my father. I mean, I had to take my own father to the bathroom like a child. And um, I remember sitting across the table from him and my father looks right over at me and he goes, you're a nice man. <laughs> it was just, it was kind of funny, but sad <laughs> that he didn't know he was talking to his own son. Um, but I started hanging around the house more and showing my mom ways that um, to help deal with what she was dealing with. And, you know, one of the things is my dad would bust into song right in the middle of any time and he would do it constantly. As a matter of fact, to this day, and my dad passed away in 2008. And to this day, I remember this little tune he, he would sing it, do 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 and it would drive my mom crazy. She'd be like, "Hun, stop it!" And I, and so, when he would do that little song, I knew my mom would get irritated, and, and I would look and I say, "Dad, wait, it's not time for the song yet. You gotta wait a second. I'll let you know when it's time." Oh, oh, okay. And he would wait, and he'd wait, and he wouldn't sing, and my mom would not get infuriated that he was singing this damn song again. And then I would look over about 30 minutes later and be like, Hey dad, it's time for the song. That episode of dealing with my dad declining through Alzheimer's showed a significant growth trajectory for me in my own life, because having to deal with that, I had no idea that I had the capability to process and deal with something of that magnitude in that way. Um, and so that event in my life um, was uh, an eye opener to my growth. I knew I had become a man that my parents and my dad would have been proud of. Um, so that's my one of my growth stories. And now that I'm in the hot seat, I can understand why you all had a hard time figuring out <laughs> just one story. <laughs> so there it is. Um, thank you all for sharing your um, moments of significant that helped with that trajectory of growth. You know, why? Let's go back around the room. And, and this time I'm going to um, have some manners and allow the ladies to go first. <laughs> So, Melanie, I'm going to ask you um, to tell us a little bit why you feel that growth as a person, whether it's personal or professionally, why is it so important? You know, um, it's the only guarantee that you're going to get better, mm -hmm. that things will improve, mm -hmm. that whatever you're struggling with, you take those five things, right? Your finances, your health your fitness, um, your family, your community, your career, whatever that is, what, whatever's on your shoulder, what's over on your back. You can't improve anything unless you grow, unless you have the mindset that I have the capacity, whether it's through your faith, whether it's through your friends, whether it's your inner circle, whatever you do intentionally to make it better. You have to see that there is better. There is good. The potential in us is something we, we don't know where that's going to go. We can only do what we view. And so we have to be inspired to view a world that looks different than what we're struggling with. When we see that, we know that there's opportunity. We know that there's something, people, books, resources, something that we need to learn more about. You know, if, if you would say, Oh, I knew what I was going to do when I was 10 years old. Well, you may have thought like I have a vision, but you had no idea how you were going to get there. The steps you were going to take, the people you were going to meet, the things that were going to influence you, the navigation that you were going to have to, to do right yet. It was in your heart and you saw something. And so you had to figure out those steps, how to get there. And so that's what I think is so important. And it's different for all of us mm -hmm. yet. We have to realize every day is an opportunity for us to improve in some part of our life. I love it. We do what we view. It's a truth that people do what people see. And that's 
one of my main things about leadership is you're always being watched. Somebody is always watching what you're doing. That's why it's so important that the walk and the talk have to align. But I love that. I just wrote that down. I, I'm going to attribute this. We do what we view quote to Melanie. <laughs> Anza, what about you? Why is growth such an important piece of, of your journey as well? Well, I think that growth gives us hope. Um, when I became a pregnant teen, everyone told me that I had just thrown my future away. Life was over um, and they painted the picture of what life was going to be like for me. <laughs> and there was one person, she happened to be um, one of my teachers. And she said, you know, you can still do everything that you want to do. You're just probably going to live your life in a reverse order and that's okay. And, you know, that gave me hope when there were difficulties that I faced it was her voice who was louder than all of the other voices around me saying, oh, you can't do that. You know, you're not enough of this or you don't have the education for that. And so I think that when we know that it's a possibility, growth gives us hope. Um, I also think about one of the quotes from John Maxwell where he says, if you want to be able to solve bigger problems, you have to be bigger on the inside. And, you know, that has always been a driving force for me. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become in order to get to where it is I want to go? And I think a lot of that has to do with casting your vision as a leader, whether it's a vision for yourself, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your community, uh, whatever that may be, being able to see something bigger, to be a part of something bigger than what you are as a whole. And, you know, also for me, um, on a personal level, it, it's about building legacy. It's about what kind of world do I want my granddaughter to inherit? How can I make a difference? Who do I need to become? What do I need to model for her to be able to continue to make that difference in the world long after I'm gone? Oh, man. So you grabbed hope to grow, and then you became somebody else's hope <laughs> for them to grow. That That's crazy. So. And what? Go ahead. I said, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're that person for your daughter and your granddaughters, right? And now they're looking at you and now they have hope because they've seen your growth and your success. So <laughs> that is awesome. And you were talking about this teacher. You're talking mm -hmm. about this teacher who um, was pretty much trying to tell you how your life was going to unfold. And it reminded me of this. Um, I heard Les Brown tell a story. He's a, If you don't know who Les Brown is, you guys, he's a motivational speaker. And he tells a story about when he was in school. And a teacher, um, he was sitting in a classroom and the teacher told him to come up to the board and uh, to write something on the board. And he said, I can't, sir. And he said, I, he goes, you listen to me. I want you to come up here and write on this board. He said, no, sir, I, I can't do that. Why can't you do that? Well, I'm mentally uneducable. I cannot, I've been told that I'm mentally retarded and I cannot learn um, and I cannot do what you're asking me to do. And that teacher looked at him and said, don't you ever let anyone tell you who you are or who you're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and and here, here he is today, a, a famous, very highly um, talented, motivational speaker, Les Brown. Um, and so that teacher story just reminded me of that story because, man, there's a great YouTube video. If I can find it, I'm going to put the link to um, Les Brown's story where he tells that story in the links here because it's phenomenal. So thanks for sharing that story with us. Tony, um, talk to us about why growth is important to you as well. Uh, by the way, that Les Brown story is, is historic. You know, I remember seeing that video as well. Correct. And uh, I'm glad, glad you said that. Don't allow people to shape who you are mm -hmm. and tell you who you can be. Uh, again, it's truly about the art of the possible. Mm -hmm. uh, growth is important to me because it's about lifelong learning people often confuse growth with success. Mm -hmm. Success is such a relative word because it can mean so many things to so many people. 
But if you're learning, in my mind, you're growing. Um, my mother and father taught me early on to do my best no matter what I was doing, uh, to give your best, to, uh, so to speak, don't half but do anything. Um, if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. And so those words still resonate with me today. Uh, as the saying goes, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to move to another room. So challenge yourself. Challenging yourself uh, means that you're growing, that you're learning to grow. Um, I often share with my children to not be afraid to make mistakes, um, that, you know, mistakes or don't be afraid of failure as well, because uh, failures and mistakes are opportunities to grow. So to embrace them, because again, uh, more often than not, and, and Les Brown even talks about it, a lot of times people won't grow because they're afraid they won't succeed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, growth is important to me because it becomes a catalyst to other things. And like I shared earlier, it's a continuum. And so growth is, again, and I'm glad you said it, whether it's prof prof professional, spiritual, physical, mental, uh, I'm a Christian too. And so I often pray about God ordering my every step. And so all of those facets, so to speak, holistically round a person out. And at the core of that is just ensuring that you're growing in every single area. Yeah. And and if I know anybody that has just stepped up to every and any challenge thrown at them, it's you. I mean, you have taken on and accepted well, actually, you know what's interesting, Tony, is that not only have you um, accepted these challenges, but you've excelled in every single one of them. And that is a result of your growth. Um, you know, that first assignment, nah, maybe not so sure, but you still came out on the good end. And that led to the next thing and you did better then. And then that led to that next opportunity and you did even better then. And that led you to sitting right beside Admiral Robinson as his right hand man for for years. I mean, he would not let you go. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory tells me he did not want to let you go until he was ready to retire. Is that true? Yeah, that's that's uh so he and then uh, when he retired it was Admiral Nathan who became mm -hmm. the next Surgeon General and that's uh Admiral Nathan was the one to select me. Again you you shared that story previously. I was the most junior uh, the first African-American, uh, again, to be CIO of the Navy Health Enterprise. So between the two, Admiral Robinson and Nathan, but again, it's one of those things, and you and I have talked about this. Um, again, latch yourself to people doing things that you want to do, and uh, don't be afraid of that. Um, more often than not, people are afraid to embrace their shortcomings, like you talked about those gaps. And so in those instances, I mean, the highest ranking people in Navy medicine, I made sure that selfishly, I was like, man, I want to do what they're doing. And so uh, let me latch on. And so, but you're right. It was about a 15 year run uh, between the two, but it was a, uh, it was a blessing for the opportunity. Man, crazy, crazy. Ms. L, I have not forgotten about you, my friend, <laughs> please. I throw down I'm some good. wisdom I, on us I, about this I, gr growth. I, I, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm perfect here. Look, I'm enjoying this. I don't know the people online, what they're doing, but look, I can show you. This is me listening. <laughs> look, I wish I, I wish I had the time because I've I've I written several thoughts and quotes based on everyone's uh, um, based on everyone's answer. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this growth. It's extremely important to me because it's the evidence that I am alive. Um, I'm glad that you and, and Tony actually, and even uh, uh, um, as far as I know, uh, Melanie, you have a, 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 a closer proximity than I do to the medical field. And, and, and the way I express is the difference between, a, a, between live, being alive and, and, and dead, right? It's that you're growing. So if I'm growing, growth is the evidence that I am alive, you know what I mean? So you either growing or you're dying. That's it, right? There is, there is no in-between, right? For, at least for me, there is no in-between. You, you're either growing, right? Creating life, creating something, going, moving forward, or you, you're dying. So to, growth is extremely, extremely important to me because it's the evidence 
that I am alive. You know, it's, it's, it's the evidence that I'm actually living to God's creation. Uh, uh, Melanie earlier said, she said, you know, I was living or not living to a job description. And I said to myself, when you try to live to a job description, you stop living to God's creation. Right. So when you're trying to satisfy a job description, then you you stop living up to God's creation. So I don't want to feel, you know, fulfill a job description. I want to live up to God's creation, to whatever it is that he wants me to be, that he created me to be. So growth, it's it, look it, it, for me, honestly, this is how I see it is God, my family and growth. Right. And I need to grow so I can give a good reporting of my family and I need to grow in my faith because that's the way it goes. That's that's who created me. So extremely important because and finally, I tell you this, you know, there's so many notes. My head is spinning around, but be, growth to me is important because I'm not defined by what I do. I define by who made me right? That, that's, that's my definition. So what I'm doing, that's not my definition. Who made me is my definition. Look at your computer, look at your car, look at your cell phone, look at your shoes, look at your clothing. It has a brand on it. It has a stamp on it. So the definition of that particular item is not the, the goal or the purpose that it's doing or whatever it's doing is defined by the brand, right? So my question is, which brand do you have on? That's your definition, right? So that that's the importance of growth in my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Woo. Oh man. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take a stab at this, but man, how embarrassing to go after all of you. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, Miziel. Tons of gold there. Tons of gold there. I love that the whole branding and the way you tie that to. I, I, the whole computer, the shoes, that, that all of those things are predefined. That's what they are. And your, who defined you is what you are. I love this. And it ties into my, my explanation of why growth is so important. And it all goes back to that one word that I think Melanie started off saying first, and that was potential, potential, our obligation our obligation to be walking on the earth is to try, at least try to reach our full potential because it's unlimited. We, we can work hard at trying to reach our potential and slide into the grave still trying <laughs> because if you're not growing, like Ms. Yell said, you're dying. And so growth provides us the path. It provides us the opportunity. It provides us the energy. It provides us the focus to reach our potential. And at the end of the day, reaching our potential is our obligation. Whether you want to believe that that's our obligation to the creator who put us here, whatever you believe, it's our obligation to reach our full potential. And I love that you said, if you're not growing, you're dying because it's absolutely true. And, and this is what happens to people, right? They, they don't think about the intentionality of growth. For example, um, and I don't know what the statistic is, but there's a very high statistic. And if I need to, I'll go to Google and find it for you. But there's a very large number of people who don't pick up a book once they graduate college. They never read a book again. They don't. It's about 93% of college graduates don't read a book after they graduate. 93%. Now, this is why I chose <laughs> to talk about the importance of growth because Reading is one way. Surrounding yourself with people like I am here today. You you now can see why these folks are in my inner circle. Be, this is how I grow. I'm influenced by them. I read books. I read articles. 
I go to events, I continue to improve, and this is how I continue to reach my potential. So that's why growth, I feel like, is not just important to me, it's important for all of us, is because it, it just goes back to what Ms. Yell said, is because if we aren't actively growing, we're just waiting around, we're dying on the vine, because that's what's happening. If, if a, a tree stops growing, what's that mean? It means it's dying. <laughs> so there we have it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, man. for 7 billion people in the world, 93% is 6 billion, 510 million. That's how many people don't read a book. That's a lot <laughs> of people. That's why we're having this discussion. It's important, folks. So I'm glad you tuned in today to, <laughs> to listen to this conversation about growth. And again, this can apply, this is why I love these topics, because it doesn't matter if you wanna apply the stuff we're saying to your personal journey or your professional journey, or both. It is, it's cross-sectional. You can apply it anywhere you need. You know, um, Melanie was talking about the almost the life wheel. We all have pieces of pie on our life wheel, right? And they're all different for all of us. Like, you know, finances, family, you know, those basic things. Um, and, you know, health, those, those are our pieces of, of pie. And if you're, if you rate yourself on those on a scale of one to 10 and you see where you're at in each one of those pies and you see, you might need to grow, maybe one's a three and then another one's a seven and then the other one's a 10 and the other one's a two. Well, if you had that circle and you outlined those threes, tens, twos, sevens, that would be a jagged circle, wouldn't it? And that ride would be extremely bumpy. <laughs> so um, this is why growth is important. It allows us to focus on those areas where maybe we aren't tens and identify what we need to do to improve and not go from a two to a 10, but go from a two to a three. And then when you get to the three, you go to a four and you just simply ask yourself, what do I need to do next? to go one more point on the scale. How do I go from three to four or four to five? That's the importance of growth. I love it. Thank you all for jumping in on that one. That was great. <laughs> Here's another great one that I was thinking about. If you could meet up with your younger self, <laughs> Lord help me, <laughs> what would you tell your younger self about growth? And it's okay if if your um, answers kind of cross-pollinate something you've already said. It, it's fine about that. But what would you tell your younger self? Let's go. Anza, why don't you kick us off? Because I see you nodding. You're ready to tell your younger self this about growth. <laughs> well, I, the thing that comes to mind for me is that habits build your life. So work on focusing habits that build good character, create consistency, and empower you to make a bigger impact in the world because it just starts with one person and mm. through your influence it's like a pebble a pebble in a pond right you mm. create bigger and bigger ripples and so i think looking back that would be the biggest thing i would go back and tell my younger self yeah um w that's I, I just want everybody to write this one thing down. I mean, you can write everything she said down, but write this down, <laughs> if, if anything. Habits build your life. Habits build your life. Habits build your life. Um, and it reminds me of, and I'm pretty sure John Maxwell said this, is it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, it matters what you do daily, right? <laughs> You, what that's what matters. You have to keep doing it day after day after day. That consistency and intentionality is what's important. So right. um, I love that. That's great. And, I just there's another yeah. quote from Anza. <laughs> <laughs> and and Melanie will will um, I know echo this, but you know consistency compounds. And so it's doing the little things every day make a huge mm. difference in a year, in five years, in ten years. 
I, you know what? I, I just love that segue. And let's go to Melanie. And Melanie, this is probably a great time to talk to us about this. Um, well, first of all, tell us what you would tell your younger self. But um, I also want to hear a little bit about what you're doing with this 930. Hold on, I wrote it down. I'm going to tell you 936 days of this. So what would you tell your younger self about growth? Uh you know, it has changed. Um, today, I would tell my younger self to be curious, to learn more. And meaning that is giving yourself permission to go into rooms that you're not comfortable in and ask questions and listen. So mentoring isn't something that I was ever really taught or or um educated on or like what did that mean it was you again you you go fill this job description you go to school you do all the things on the checklist and then you just become right and so but understanding what mentorship really means that people pour into you different than a coach different than a hired you know person at a job mentoring and and that they care about you as a person your values mm -hmm. And that they will pour into you. And if you listen, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my example, right? Here's my story about that. So I'm 2017, 2018, I'm going through this. You have no value, right? And um, in 2019, I'm still like doing things consistently, started my podcast, started mm -hmm. talking about leadership, pouring into learning. And so I listened to John Maxwell, here it's about John Maxwell today, isn't it? <laughs> but he had a minute with Maxwell that he did all these pre recorded messages, right? But they came and I listened at the right time. You can hear it a million times, but when you hear it when you're ready, that's what changes you. Mm. So he said, Hey, if you're a person of faith, if you're wanting to gain wisdom and clarity, read the book of Proverbs for 31 days. It's just, just do that. Like, just, it's a challenge. Just do it. It'll help you. I'm your friend. It'll help you. <laughs> so right. I thought, well, that's not threatening. I can do that. So I got a group of people together and I said, hey, I need clarity. I'm looking for clarity right now. I really need this. And, and I don't care if you show up one day or 31 days, but I want to do this. And so 730 a.m. people signed on Zoom before the COVID. Right? <laughs> and we started meeting and learning and from the John Maxwell Leadership Bible, there were so many leadership nuggets and principles and Easter eggs in there about how you do something from a lesson from many, 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 many years ago to teach you how to use those to apply them to your life and become better. It's talking about intentional improvement, right? So every day we left with a challenge. What are we going to do differently now that we know what we know? And so anyway, here we go, 936 days today, we've continued that journey because we learned so much. People join, people leave, people come on whenever they can. They pop on and say hi. Yet mm -hmm. we know it's a safe environment for growth. And we have positioned our minds to say, how do we need our heart to grow? Mm. That's what's happened. Not just my mind, my heart has changed. And I have been really intentional about this clarity. Everything that I do now, me see all you'll love this. I take every challenge that I'm faced with and I go through the 15 laws of growth. If mm -hmm. you don't have that book, get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I question like, is it intentional? Am I aware of the things that I need to be aware of? Do I have the right role model? Am I gonna learn something? Will this cause me pain to grow? Can I add significance? Like every single question that now gives me the clarity to make the decisions that I need to make for the next right thing. Mm. That's what that's taught me for 936 days. <laughs> so that's a story. <laughs> 30, a 31 day challenge. See, this is what we're talking about right here. How do you turn a 30 day challenge into a three year effort? And what I love about her consistency, Melanie's consistency is that you know, she was saying how people come and go and they, you know, some are there, some are not, and then they come back. But the thing is, they all know that Melanie's always going to be there at that time, on that day, waiting. 
and, and doing her thing. And that consistency is now helping them to grow. It's that's amazing. I love that story. And by the way, congratulations. It's been phenomenal watching that thing just unfold before your very eyes. <laughs> it's amazing. It. Thank you. It's been amazing. And and, you know, it's not what you do. It's what happens on the inside. Yeah. And I think yeah. everybody has said that. Right. But until you do it, you can just sit there and I'll tell you this real quick. So my husband was a he was just an observer for a couple of years. Yeah. And then he said, I think I want to join that. Like, Love can I it. sign on? And so now he joins every day. He actually produces it. You know, we have to do everything on time and when he does it. <laughs> but, yes. but yet it's um, it changes you from the inside. And then you inspire people that are on the outside watching to take yeah. action. Yeah. Yeah, That's let's ECL, advanced, right? Advanced leadership. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we should give Joe a little plug here. And listen, if you need audio visual support, Joe Ake Studios is the guy to go to. He does produce his wife's podcast show and every other thing. Um, so it's phenomenal. But Joe, super nice guy. But Besides that, he's super knowledgeable too and super helpful. So um, check out Joe Ake Studios. <laughs> Joe, you can pay me later. All right. <laughs> Ms. Yell, I'm dying to hear what you would be telling your younger self. And, and I'm picturing this little scrawny, skinny kid putting on these shoes that are too big for him. What are you telling that kid? Yeah, I've there's so many things i'm sure <laughs> all of us no. you know yeah uh, i will share you know two uh of the things of the thousands of things that i wish uh, mm. i i could go back and tell myself at 14 15 mm. uh, the first thing now right because i can speak like this now but the first thing i would tell myself a younger missile is you know life is a process and everything you're going through right now it's evidence of what you will become in the future so you know the pain that you suffer today builds endurance for tomorrow mm -hmm. right it's just developing that muscle it, mm -hmm. it's just that it's working that muscle so look at what you're going through today and that's the evidence of what you will be able to do tomorrow, what you will be able to carry, the load that you'll be able to carry, the, mm. the, 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 what you will be able to do. So I will, I will tell that um, um, to my younger self. And the second thing that I will share with you of the many I will say uh, is that you are more than what we can see and you are more than what you've been told, right? So mm -hmm. you're not your current condition and circumstances, and you are not what other people are calling you or telling you, right? So you're more than what the eye can see. You know, I'm not looking at, you know, everything that Tony is. I'm not looking at everything that Ansa, Melanie, or Greg is, mm -hmm. are, right? I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, in fact, if I could take 30 seconds here and expand yes. on that, please, I will say this. I'm not even looking at your present. I'm looking at your past. You know why? Because whatever you are today is the result of what you did yesterday. So I'm not looking at your present anymore. I'm looking at your past. If mm -hmm. I want to know who you are today, I got to wait until tomorrow, until your decisions today develop and then become a reality. So you're not what I'm looking at and you're not what you've been told. That's what I would tell what I would say to a younger Misael. <laughs> Tony, you're going next because <laughs> I'm not touching that one. That was great. Tony, what advice are you giving to young Tony? No, that uh, that was outstanding. Um, <clears throat> what would I tell young, young Tony? I tell young Tony a lot. Maybe give him the advanced lotto numbers or something. No, <laughs> no <maybe>. kidding. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but what I would tell him about growth, to embrace it, um, to not shy away from success or the not-so-successes, that the greatest leaders were greater followers, 
and to ensure that I follow the people that challenge me to ensure that I achieve my greatest growth. Um, Mesiel, he, he mentioned, you know, talked about growth, spiritual growth. In the book of Romans, it says, not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character hope. Mm -hmm. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured, has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given to us. And so again, the very thing that we're talking about resonates scripturally about the trials, but I also submit to you, it's not just about trials, but that we can grow in all aspects of life. It's not just for, from our failures. Um, to the listeners, I share with you, start to journal early. Um, so often, you know, you go through something and when you're going through the fire, the success, whatever it is, you don't realize what it is until later on, you have an opportunity to go back and look at it. Uh, Gigi, I know you remember this. Uh, in our young enlisted days, we used to call them love notes. Uh, we would write our successes, the things that were going on, because at the end of the year, we were evaluated and, and against our peers. And there was a, a level of competition. So you had to remember all of the little bitty things that you did over the year. And so I still today, you know, not as prolific, but there was a time where every single day I wrote about what I did before, but I also wrote about what I'm going to do in the future. So that way there, I kind of plotted my success. So to the listeners, please journal. It's not too late because it's reflective and there's nothing cooler than to, you know, five, 10 years to go back to a journal and look back at the things you were writing about yourself or to yourself or the things you wanted to do. But it's also about holding yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so again, and I say this humbly, uh, and again, Greg, Greg has shared, and, and again, I've had a blessed career, uh, certainly in the military, and then since having retired. But uh, again, to that young Tony, uh, to embrace all of it. And, and I'll share just one other pretty cool story. Um, uh, three children, uh, my two youngest boys, again, obviously African American family, and growing up in the South, uh, we say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, uh, very, very polite. Uh, and so uh, my boys we were in the restroom, in this public restroom, and uh, I was giving them some direction about something. I'm sure it was like, hey, make sure you wash your hands or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And my boys, you know, yes, dad, yes, sir. Yes, no, sir. Yes, sir. And a gentleman uh, and his son were in this stall or whatever they were doing, and they pop out and kind of caught me by surprise. And they went over and washed their hands, wash hands. And he said, excuse me. <clears throat> he said, I'd like to shake your hand. He said, if you don't mind, I want my son to shake your son's hand because you just example, and I tell my son what kind of man you should be. And that one moment was so huge. And ironically, that was about five, six years ago. Uh, we're coming out of COVID. So transparently, we've not had a lot of visitors at our home, yeah. but we had some guests at our home yesterday. And of course, my 13-year-old, my who doesn't look 13, he's six foot one, uh, <laughs> but, but he... he uh, his, the parents of the boys that were here yesterday for the party, I was kind of bellowing down to him and yelled out, yes, sir, no, sir. And all the parents just kind of stopped like, wow. And well, how do you do that? And, you know, I, you know, gave the story. But the point being is, is that that one success of them realizing that when you treat people a certain way, more often than not, you get treated the same way back, generally speaking. And that one success, even today, has resonated with them. And, and again, yesterday with these, these young ladies that were here, these mothers, they were like in awe, in awe that, you know, my boys are still saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, Yep, yeah, exactly. Success leaves clues, keeps ringing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Love notes, journal and love notes. Yeah, man. And, you know, you were talking about going back and reading those. If you don't feel like you're experiencing growth, um, do what I did. I, you know, I told you earlier at the start of this show that um, I have been doing this almost for four years, every week for four years. And so I went back to my very first episode, my first couple of weeks, my first month. And I watch those episodes. If you want to see growth, go read those old journals. You'll see growth. 
from where you were to where you are now. If you don't feel like you're growing, trust me, if you're putting in the work, if you're taking intentional actions, you are growing. Um, and there is evidence of that growth. You just have to look for it. So um, I love that you uh, talked about journaling. Um, that's a key piece to to the growth journey. Uh, so thanks. Thanks, you guys, for that. So here's my advice to Gregory. <laughs> Gregory Michael, as my mom would call me when I was in trouble. <laughs> the first thing, and, and Melanie's probably not going to be surprised by my answer. Um, and that is, I would tell myself to get comfortable being uncomfortable and, and to get out of the comfort zone. Don't keep doing things that you're comfortable doing because gr nothing grows there in the, in the comfort zone. You've got to bust out of that and you've got to take risks. You've got to be willing to do things that just make you a little uncomfortable um, you know, a big example, and, and Melanie is has been forcing me to write a book called What If You Did? Because my whole life has been this very theme uh, of everything I've experienced, and including our move to Italy. We, If you don't know, I live abroad. My wife and I live in northern Italy. We've been here in next month will be two, four years that we've been living here. And when my wife got the job offer to leave and, and come here. We left Virginia. Um, we, him and Hod for a little bit and, um, we said, let's do it. And, but saying let's do it's one piece, right? You, you can commit to it, but it's where you take action. This is the piece. Like you can be all talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but until you start taking action, you're gonna, gonna all day. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is the thing. So the action we took was we sold one of our homes in South Carolina. We rented out the other home and we sold all of our furniture. We sold our cars. We put what little things we had left into storage back in Virginia. And I shipped over 20 boxes of clothes and shoes and of course purses <laughs> for my wife. Um, it could leave those behind. Um, and that's what we came here with. And we grabbed our two cats and we got on a plane and we left it all behind to start here. That's a huge risk. And the one question I always get asked is, how could you do that? And, or the other thing is, I could never. And those words, when you speak them, will become true. And Henry Ford said it best when he said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And so I've never lived by the motto like, ah, uh, we could never do this. It's always, how do I? How do we pull this off? That has, you know, taken, getting out of our comfort zone. I mean, oh my gosh, we were in it. We were in our zones. My wife was working in the federal sector. I was in the private sector in, in DC. We were making money hand over fist. I had just started my own business and landed my first contract and I had to tell the guy who gave me the contract, the owner of this company, I'm going to stop my contract six months early because my wife and I are moving to Northern Italy. <laughs> so uh, crazy as it sounds, these are the decisions and these are the things that you, the actions you have to take if you want to experience growth. You will not grow if you stay in your comfort zone, in your nice little routines and, and in your comfy slippers, and PJs, doing the same things over and over again. If you want to start small, do this. Go to a different coffee shop next weekend. Next Saturday morning, when you get in that car to go get your coffee in the morning, go somewhere different. I know you're like, what? <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, just change one little thing you do daily and that will spark the growth in you. So that's what I would tell little Gregory Michael <laughs> if I could see him today would get out of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. All right. Woo, man, this is awesome. We're let's let's do one more um, question here because this thing has been chock full of 
nuggets. And I hope you guys are furiously writing things down out there because, uh, man, uh, I, I don't know. I obviously could not have done this just on my own. Oh, there's another lesson, by the way. We don't get anywhere in life without the help of others. <laughs> Write that down. Anyway, let, <laughs> let's let's go straight into, um, I don't know, let me see what would, I have some questions here that were pre-positioned, but I want to wrap this up nicely. Um, how about this? Let's go around the room and maybe let's give our listeners, the people that are joining us today and, and those who may um, watch this on replay, let's give them something they can take away. What's something that our listeners can do today to start their growth, either start their growth journey or reignite their growth journey. Maybe they've stalled a little bit and they're, they're just lost. They've settled into their routines again and they're, they're in that comfort zone and they're nice, warm and snuggy <laughs> and they don't want to leave. How can we help them? So Miziel, how about you kick us off with this one? Give us a tip, a tip or some advice that we could follow that would help us um, ignite our growth once again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Greg, and and for all of you online. You know, thank you for all the engagement and, and the comments and everything. I uh, I want to take something that that Tony said. Mm. You know, he talked about um, being the first African American in a position, uh, being the first or the most junior person. Um, in certain position, surrounding himself with people that were above his rank mm -hmm. and going through challenging situations. So here's here's a tip that I would uh, that I would highly recommend that brings a little bit of what you've mentioned and and is this. And the tip comes with a book and a law, right? I love so it. comes comes with the 15 laws i know you've, you've mentioned that a lot you know this they don't sell it they don't sell it that way okay. <laughs> okay. they don't they don't sell it that way they they are much better looking when you buy them but uh, yes, they are if, if you if you use it as i do then probably mm. eventually gets to that point <laughs> here's my tip first is 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 based on what tony said that he put in all he put he was in all of that situations that places that were bigger than him mm. and and i would recommend you reading law number six which is the law of environments in the 15 laws of growth and and let me explain the best i can okay plant yourself in an environment that is bigger than you right if, if you picture it this way, at least I know even when you were a little kid in, in middle school or high school, somewhere you did that little experiment where you take a little seed or a bean and you put it inside a plastic cup, right? And you try to grow inside a plastic cup. So picture your, your favorite fruit, whatever that is. If you plant it in a cup, you will never eat a fruit from that tree. Now, the question is, does the little tree have the potential to bear fruit? Absolutely, yes. Now, if he has the potential to bear fruits, why am I telling you that you will never eat a fruit from that particular tree? And the answer is what Tony did, or the opposite. The tree will never bear fruits because it's it is planted in an environment that is smaller than its potential. Mm -hmm. So when you plant yourself in an environment that is smaller than your potential, you can never produce up to your highest potential. So you got to plant yourself in an environment that is bigger than you so you can express your highest potential. So as long as you're surrounded with people that are that think l less than you and think less of you and people that are afraid of challenges and people that do not challenge you, right? So you got to put yourself in an environment that is bigger, stronger, faster, better, right? Than you, 
then you will be able to grow to your highest potential. So my tip is find an environment in which you feel uncomfortably, you know, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but not in a way that you are uncomfortable because it's judgmental. No, 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 no. Uncomfortable in a way because people are growing and they expect you to grow. Where growth is model, right? Where failure is not your enemy, where others are ahead of you. Put yourself in that position. Mm -hmm. That's my tip. Mm -hmm. Read the law of environment, law number six, 15 laws of growth. Mm -hmm. And with intentionality, put yourself around people where you feel like, you know what? And maybe this is not the right word, but let me just, for, for, for laughing sake, let, let me put it this way. Be the dumbest in the room. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your job is to be the dumbest in the room, right? Exactly. That's my tip. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, <laughs> that conjures up this image of me flying from, I, I was actually stationed in Italy in my last duty station in the Navy. And I had to fly back from Naples, Italy to Jacksonville, Florida every three weeks for our Lean Six Sigma Black Belt class. Four, four weeks, right? Four months. We were there four, four months a week. Four months I was yeah. doing this, right? Flying through Germany. It was the same flight, same flight numbers, <laughs> same people at the counter. I started bringing them bottles of wine from Italy <laughs> just so I could get better seats on the plane. But... I day one, I fly in, I'm sitting down and I, uh, Tony's sitting across the table from me in all of Navy medicine. Here's Greg. Here's two former dental techs, Greg and Tony sitting at the same table. And he goes, Hey, Greg. And I look over and he goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I'm like, Hmm, who? And he's like, I'm Tony. I'm like, Tony, what are you doing here? And we went through Lean Six Sigma black belt training together. And to your point, Ms. Yell, we were the dumbest in the room, <laughs> weren't we, Tony? <laughs> or at least I shouldn't speak for Tony. I was definitely the dumbest in the room. But, you know, four months later, I came out with a black belt in Lean Six Sigma with Tony. So, um, yeah, you're exactly right. I love that law, the law of environment. Uh, beautiful, Ms. Yell. And Tony, I saw you come off of mute w right when Ms. Yell said that. So I'm going to flip right over to you. And um, what would you say? What what kind of advice would you give out? Well, listen, first of all, I have no problem admitting I too were the dumbest person in that room. And uh, again, in the moment, you're just thinking, why did I do this? Like glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I echo exactly what Ms. Yell uh, expressed, shared. Um, but I'll add to that, um, that you should find, as you find yourself in an environment where you're the dumbest person seeking to grow uh, or lack thereof knowledge, find a mentor, find an advisor, someone that you trust, someone that will be brutally honest with you, someone that is already accomplished or doing something or, or going to where you want to be or doing where you want to be. Um, and that person, that person speaks in your life and helps you with this continuum to grow. Okay. And so don't be afraid, be open, be vulnerable, be honest. Okay. Of your shortcomings or those opportunities to learn. And again, I'm an advocate that a failure is not a failure if you can grow. Okay. If in fact you learn from it, it's not a failure. In my mind, it's a success. You may not have one on paper, but if you learn from it, then it's a success. And so again, to the readers, don't be afraid to seek out people. And, and I've said it many, many times, if I'm the smartest guy in the room, why do I need you? So I have to find a different room where that I can learn. And so uh, again, Mizio said it perfectly well, but find a mentor, find an advisor, be honest, and allow them to sow into you, to speak into your life in such a way that you can grow. Mm. Well said, well said. Anza, what about you? Mm. Well, I think it's about being accountable. Um, we are more likely to succeed in our endeavors if we're accountable to someone else. 
-hmm. or to ourselves. Um, I was just looking up on Google just to see what the statistics were. And if we are not accountable, we are only 10 to 25% um, going to achieve whatever we're set out to do. So I would say if you want to grow, invite someone to do it with you, be accountable, invite them on your journey. Um, you know, in this age of social media, post it, right? Make a public declaration of what you're going to do. You're more apt to follow through if you've told someone that you're going to do it. Um, and then we have all talked about journaling, but journal those successes, journal what's happening, be reflective, look for trends. Um, that definitely will help you in your growth journey. And, you know, going back to the law of environment, you know, change your inner circle, have that group of people on the inside that you're accountable to. And, uh, you know, I think of a recent story on um, February 1st, I decided to give up sugar and I started posting about it and people really got involved and sent me messages, encouraged me. I said, this is a 66 day detox challenge. And, you know, here we are, you know, almost 90 days down the road, I still haven't done sugar and people are still checking in. How are you doing? What's going on? So people will get involved with you when they know that you want to make a change or when you want to grow. They want to be a part of your success. They want to see you succeed. And so it'll really change everybody's mindset around you when you open up and, and I think Tony said, be vulnerable, you know, share the struggle that you're having with mm -hmm. where you're at in your growth because people are going to come alongside you. Yeah. So don't be afraid to, you know, sometimes I think we feel like being accountable. It's like being a child and really it, it's not, it, it's really taking that investment in yourself saying, I know I can't do this on my own. I think maybe it was John Maxwell who said this, if you want to go fast, do it alone. If you want to go far, do it together. It was. And that's a it very was. loose paraphrase, but it, you know, it's meaningful, right? No. Yeah, you're right on it. I, I love that you said that because here's a little secret that not many of you know, but I connected with somebody I grew up with. As a matter of fact, we met in kindergarten and about three years ago, we, well, we've been connected over the years, you know, we've stayed in touch. Um, and I think I've introduced you to her, but three years ago, we started an accountability call every week and we're in our third year. And during those three years, the growth in my business, the growth in my personal life, has been, I've achieved things that I would not have achieved on my own had I not had these discussions with an accountability partner. And, and the conversations are very simple. It's what are you planning on doing between now and the next time we get on the phone? What, what are the potential things that can get in your way of getting those things done? And what can you do about that? Um, and why, you know, what's the priority? Why are these things important? Where are you ultimately going? What's your destination? Why are you doing these activities? And then the next time you call, what'd you get done? <laughs> right? And when you have to answer to somebody and tell them, yeah, yeah, I just, I didn't get to that. You don't want to do that. If you're like me, that was sometimes there were weeks that that call was the driving factor why I did it. Because had I not had that accountability call coming up, I probably would not have done it. I would have allowed things to get in the way. I would have let life happen and I would have made excuses. But having an accountability partner like Anza just said, brilliant, brilliant piece of advice. If you um, want to see gains, get an accountability partner. You don't have to do it weekly, whatever works for you. But yes, accountability is huge. I love that tip. I love all these tips. Speaking of, <laughs> we got one more from Melanie. Melanie, what's your tip um, for growth? Oh, so it goes back to knowledge and clarity, mm -hmm. right? This is what I always say when I have clients that are stuck and just go, I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I go back to, sorry, 15 laws of growth. Chapter 15 is the law of contribution. Because mm -hmm. there's something inside of you 
before you decide to grow that's inspired you. You've seen somebody, you've seen something, you, you want to take action, but you don't know how to do it. And so here's the quote. If you're not doing something with your life, it doesn't matter how long it is. And so if you're struggling with that and going, but I know there's something more, I challenge people. So I became Y certified a couple of years ago and my why is challenge. And so how I use that is to tell people like most of the people in the 7 billion people world are contributors. They want to make a difference. People want to show up and add value. You cannot do that until you have clarity. So here's my challenge, the 20 minute challenge, whatever you're facing in your life, that's stacked up on your back, that's in your office, that's in your car, that's in your life. Tackle that for 20 minutes. Just go, just go tackle it, make a plan and go take care of it just for 20 minutes. Even if it's a four hour job, just do it for 20 minutes. The 20 minutes that you'll receive in your mind, the freedom of clarity, of Mm -hmm. purpose, of direction, of next steps, it will give you everything that you're searching for back. So that's my challenge, 20 minute challenge. It will change your life. 20 minute challenge is going down right now. (laughs) Go clean your car. That's right. I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. I I love the the challenge um, because one of the things that I did this year in the new year was I wanted to get. Uh, it almost goes along the lines of Mel Robbins' book, The Five Second Rule, where she does a countdown be, instead of procrastinating five, four, three, two, one, and then she does it. Well, I you know, doing my year end reflection realized I was doing a lot of that last year. I was kicking the, Oh, I'll get to it later. And then guess what? I never got to it. Mm. And then it started impacting my relationship with my wife because she was asking me to do things that I was saying, I'll get to it later. And it wasn't getting done. And then she would come back and be like, Hey, did you make those um, reservations? Did you plan that trip? Did you move that money from that account to this account? No, I didn't. So, um, (laughs) I became more intentional this year. And as I think of things, I just do them. So I love this 20 sec, this 20 minute challenge that was thrown down. Just do it. Nike's onto something. That's right. (laughs) Whether it's 31 days or 20 minutes, do it. (laughs) Exactly. I love it. My advice to you all, um, is this everything you have ever wanted anything you have ever dreamed of doing or being is all on the other side of fear. Fear is an acronym and you've probably heard it before. False evidence appearing real. It's so true. How just think back, think back to a time when you were so afraid to do something, but then you did it. And when you got on the other side and passed through that fear, you got there and you were like, that wasn't bad at all. (laughs) It's never as bad as this, this mindset, this, this little gremlin in our heads that tell us we're not good enough. We can't do that. We shouldn't. I mean, these are all the the messages that have played over and over in our lives. We've been told all the things we can't do. So, of course, we don't know how to grow because we can't. We've been told we can't, right? But nothing's further from the truth. You can. You just got to believe you can. But fear is the thing that holds you back from doing it. And that's that goes in line with what I was talking about earlier is, is getting out of your comfort zone. We don't leave our comfort zone because a lot of it has to do with fear. We're afraid. We're afraid to do something new. We're afraid to find out what's on the other side. When we do take action to do something different, we don't know what to expect. Well, look at me here. I sit in Northern Italy hosting my 200th episode. You know, I left in the middle of all this weekly roar stuff 
I didn't let moving to Italy stop me. My computer and my microphone were, were the first things I set up when we got here. We found an apartment in two weeks. And my main goal was to get set up and get rocking and rolling. And that's how I got to today, 200 episodes later. Four years <laughs> of coming to you live <laughs> in the weekly roar. <laughs> so thank you guys. So that's my advice um, is don't be afraid. Fear is false evidence appearing real. You just, uh, Beachbody is a, a health and wellness company. You probably heard it before, P90X, all that good stuff. I've done them all. <laughs> but there, I love their motto. Decide, commit, succeed. Very simple, but a great mm -hmm. recipe for success, right? So there you have it. That's um, my advice to you. I want to just thank all of my panel members today. I, I hope you all, by the way, the, all of you tuning in today, I hope you loved this panel discussion on growth, why it's so important, some of the things that you can do to spark your growth. Um, hearing our stories maybe have inspired you to get back in the game and start doing things a little bit differently and get out of that comfort zone and jump into the growth zone. Um, I, I hope you all enjoyed this. I just got to thank all of my panel members. I loved spending this time with you today. Um, and I know our guests have too. Um, I want to go around the room before we call it a day. Um, talk to us about how people can get a hold of you. Um, Ms. Yell, uh, how can people connect with you? Whether that's LinkedIn, how, how do you want to, uh, them to reach out? Because I know they're yeah. going to want to do it. Yeah, let me just put a waiver on that a little bit. Um, yeah. First of all, uh, Greg, I, I can't believe it's been four years that you moved. Man, yeah. I remember yeah. all the IKEA boxes. Yeah. You know? yes. I remember yes. that. Yes. Wow, four yes. years. Time mm -hmm. flew by. It did. So right around that time, so I just got to say this real quick. I won't take a long time. I know you asked me a direct question. I should be answering it. It's just because of the audience that we have here today. Yeah. No, fine. Right around the time when I, when I started, when I started this journey, so I'm an engineer by education, you know, I, I worked for about 10 years uh, in a private sector. Then I decided to go full time as a coach, speaker, trainer, and start my own business. And when I started doing this, I was going bilingual. One day you will find a piece, a piece of content that was in English, and the next day it would be in Spanish. And what I realized a few years into that is that I was not um, gaining any ground because I was confusing the market. You know, what, what, where are you a Spanish speaking coach or are you an English speaking coach? You can definitely be both, but at the beginning it was confusing. So what I decided right around the time when Greg, uh, when Greg moved, I said, I'm gonna go all in in Spanish, right? I'm just gonna give it a try for several reasons. One, we don't have that many people doing what we do in the Spanish speaking world. Right. Second, Spanish is my first language. So I wanted to give back to my community. Mm -hmm. And third, you know, this is a very ambitious goal and I will give it to you as a homework. I asked myself, who is John Maxwell in the Spanish speaking world? Who is Tony Robbins in the Spanish speaking world? Who is Brendan Bouchard in the Spanish speaking world? Who is, you know, whoever, there is none. Yeah. So uh, you get my logic. So I decided to go full blast in the Spanish speaking world and my business boomed. Like it's, it's it went crazy. Yeah. Now to Great question. What am I telling you that? Because 90 to 95% of my content today is in Spanish, Correct. right? About mm -hmm. most of my content is in Spanish. I do work in the English uh, speaking community. Um, I do work for companies that it's all English training and all that, but most of my content, content is in Spanish. That being said, my books are in Amazon. So if you type Nisail Diaz, you would find my books my very first book, Creating a New Story, this one right here, which is a bestseller in Latin America, mm -hmm. it's about to be released in English in June. So we're I just going that. through the final through the final details of that. And, right. and in June, it will be out in the market um, as an English version. And then we'll move on through the next. But this one, because yeah. is the one that has the, more, the most traction, we decided to go 
uh, with that one first in English. So Amazon for the books, if you visit Diaz, so my last name first, DiazMissile.com, DiazMissile.com, you will find, that's my website, and there you will find all of the information. LinkedIn, Missile Diaz, YouTube, Missile Diaz, Facebook, Missile Diaz. So it's very easy. Yep. My name for everything, <laughs> right? So it's very simple, right? My name, it's, it's I don't think you know many people uh, by the name of Missile. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's very easy to find and happy to connect and happy to, you know, share with you or help in any way I can. And, you know, it's it's my honor to do what I do. Anza, um, how can people get a hold of you and, um, I think you said you were you have a special for us today for all of the people that are joining us. I do. So I have my book, Activate Your Life. It's a part of a three volume series, and it goes right along with what we talked about today, taking action and being intentional about your growth. Uh, the chapter that I contributed is all about taking radical responsibility for your life, I you know, know, finding your voice, speaking up for what you need. Um using journaling to as a as a growth tool so it's available on amazon but i'd like to give one free to one of your listeners however you would like to um to do that and if people wanted to know more about me i am super easy to find you can find me at anza goodbar on facebook linkedin uh youtube um instagram and my website is audientum.com and it shares a little bit more about our services and how we serve our community. Oh, you know what else, Anza? What I loved about what you were doing before was featuring businesses. So if you want to raise your business's visibility and get featured in Anza's upcoming Idea to Income blog series, I'm going to put a link there. Um, it'll take you to a form. You'll just fill out that form and next thing you know, Anza's spotlighting your business. It's really awesome. So I'm going to put that in the comments as well. So look for that. Thank you so much. Tony, how can people link up with you? I probably just uh, said it. <laughs> no, that's it. LinkedIn, uh, certainly if you Google me, but preemptively, I will share with the listeners that uh, I most recently was on a uh, television show. So you'll see a whole bunch of stuff uh, there before you get to uh, my website, which is justonetechnology.com. Yeah. And certainly on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. But yes, if you Google me, yes, I am that Tony Thornton that was on a Bravo TV show. Uh, but in there, you'll see my company and other relevant information. So, but uh, like the rest of the, the panelists, uh, absolutely happy to help in any way that I can. I love to mentor. I love to uh, assist people in their growth journey. Just remember, you only need just one. <laughs> just one. I love that. Um, actually, Tony, could would you mind sharing the story behind the name of Just One? Is that okay? So yeah, no, that's okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, my oldest son, who would be 31 this year, passed away 2011 um, uh, from T-cell leukemia cancer, and his name is Justin. So Justin translates to the righteous or the Just One, and hence the company is Just One Technology. And uh, you know, at the time, and Greg and I, again, are, at our, our core, we're, we're hospital administrators, haven't been in healthcare. At that time, I thought I knew healthcare until my son got sick and ultimately passed away. And then again, you know, uh, everyone has their own story, but that became a catalyst for me to where I am today. And while painful, uh, you know, his passing away was not in vain because certainly uh, I help in the public sector, but my primary focus is healthcare. Uh, to and uh, ingest technology and innovation around serving people and making folks better. So uh, thank you, Greg, for allowing me to share that. Yeah, I, I love that um, piece of your history and, and how it's transformed. You know, we're talking about growth and here's uh, an extremely adverse event that, um, you know, led to this a company and you know we just started out as kids tony we were we were 17 18 when we joined the navy and here you are today you know 30 years later 30 35 <laughs> pushing 40 years later <laughs> you know a successful business owner and so this is proof this is proof of of growth growth works if you follow well the things that we've recommended today but tony is living proven as well as all of our panel members today 
um, that, you know, intentional actions and focus and surrounding yourself with the right people and, and getting mentors, all of those things we talked about all lead to our growth. And, and Tony's a great example of that. Th thank you, Tony, for sharing that story. Appreciate it. And then, um, Melanie, we have a billion zillion kajillion. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she has so many links. She has a website of just links <laughs> to get a hold of her. It's hilarious, but I love it. Melanie. It's so easy. <laughs> it is. Pick pick whatever you want to engage with, and it's all there. I'm going to put that link, but really, um, <laughs> how should we get a hold of you? You know, it's crazy. Here's the thing, right? Before I even, when I was doing my podcast, I thought everyday leaders, that's who... I was, that's what I saw. That's what yeah. I viewed. Yep. And so that was my company, Everyday Leaders. Yet I didn't have the domain for it mm. until one day before my first event. And I got a call from GoDaddy and they said, hey, this is coming up for auction. It's been owned from a guy from Australia for years, never done anything with it. <laughs> Are you interested in joining the, the auction? Mm -hmm. So we did, and we actually bid and won 24 hours before my very first event. So I got to go after a year and a half of like, you know, everyday leaders, everyday leaders, not mm -hmm. thinking that I might ever get this website, but now it's everydayleaders.com. That's it. where you can find everything. The morning devotionals. It's right there. It's yeah. a public link. Click on the link on zoom. <laughs> um, my books, they're all on everydayleaders.com in the leader store. I've got four mentoring moments, pandemic blessings. We talk about stories for people that were suffering oh, yeah. and surviving and thriving through the pandemic. So it's a great compilation. Um, the Impact of Influence, volume three, is stories of women that are impacting the world, using their influence to change the world. And then the Voices for Leadership was just released just yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So it's been amazing to be this, you know, contributing author to know and, and the vision of the person bringing it together. Uh, I'm working on my own book. So Misio, you got to check my list because <laughs> there's so much, right? But you start journaling and you go, I don't know how to organize it, but everydayleaders.com. You can go there and find me everywhere. Find the links Perfect. today. I'm going to give everyone i did a live event for six hours in december yes. there's a link you can join that for two weeks you can get access to all of those speakers and a 49 page workbook that goes along with that plus a discount if you want to discover your why oh, and yeah. get clear yeah you can go on there for private coaching uh, for your for living your why so that's what i have to offer i just i so appreciate you greg and this has ah. just been Great to see everybody again and connect. Okay, now the buildup. I told you all that today I was making a huge announcement. So I think it's time to do that. All right, here we go. The big reveal is about to happen. I can't tell you the date of the release yet. However, this is the big news right here. Coming soon, the Weekly Roar is going away, and I will be your new host of a podcast called Succeeding at Leading. We are going to be coming to you weekly with leadership development tips so I can focus on helping new leaders be the best leaders they can be, one leader at a time. So there you have it. You can listen to the podcast on all channels and more information is coming. I hope you're going to start listening to the podcast Succeeding at Leading with yours truly, Greg Storch. That does it, everybody. You have all the links. We thank you all for coming and watching this uh, 200th episode of The Weekly Roar as we all discussed growth and how important that is. We hope you found some golden nuggets to take away, and we look forward to working with you further on your growth journey. Take care, everybody. See you later.